Yeah, YouTubers, Taz man here bringing you another episode of Regrowth, where we're bringing this cold, dead, desolate world back to life, one block at a time. And what? Oh, I know what's going on. Never mind. <laughs> I was gonna. What's wrong with my other eye? But I do know. Um, so here we are in my creative world. I've been doing some testing on possible wisp killing mechanisms and uh, I think I've come up with some stuff you guys are gonna like and we're gonna do some research and some testing and all that fun stuff uh, but before we do that I actually have quite a few comments so let me get into those real quick so first one sky silverwing said at this point I think adding the mini map is probably not as bad as giving yourself all the thumb no thumb craft knowledge in terms of cheating and it will help you find stuff quicker so you do you now I would like to point out uh, I almost was gonna hit the stop recording button but we're constantly losing all our thumb we we added all the thumb craft stuff but look six three when we add that, I think it, we increased everything to 5,000 just so we wouldn't have to worry about anything. But uh, yeah, we keep losing it. It's not that we lost it and then, you know, did it once. We have to keep doing it. In other words, we uh, can't do Thomcraft stuff. And a lot of that is because we have this stuff in here that helps us get most of it back. Um, in fact, I'm pretty sure this isn't everything. This is just the stuff that's in there and the things that we've actually have scanned. So anyway, yeah. Um, we've kind of been forced to do the cheating thing. Um, so uh, anyway, continuing on, the dinging is something giving you, a f uh, giving you free charge for your wand. Oh, that reminds me. I should probably turn back up the sound. We're not hearing any sounds, and I wasn't noticing that. So let's turn this back up to 70 again. In my testing, I had to do a lot of AFKing, and the noises could get annoying. So <laughs> I just uh, turned down sound. Uh, anyway, so the dinging is something giving you a, a free charge for your wand. Watch the gauges. They go up every time it dings. Not sure what or why, but that is what it is. And then says, there is a display that shows where all the nodes you have scanned uh, with your thumbnomenomenometer. Uh, look it up under goggles of revealing in your thumbnomenomicon. So the default key for this, I believe, now I can't remember what it was. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that a little later, but I did change it. So for future reference, if I say, what was that key? It is the apostrophe. And... We, oh, we haven't done it. No, we have done it on this one. I wonder if that's just a file that didn't copy over. So when we get into our other world, if we get a chance to do that today, we'll, we'll look at that and see if that actually... Because I know we did have a bunch of nodes that we added into it. But I would think... Although I just copied the world and gave it a different name. So maybe giving it a different name, the file that keeps that information isn't actually in the world or it is dependent on the world name. I'm not sure. Uh, we'll have to look into that. Then I'm not sure how easily you could set up an automatic kill facility uh, for WISP. Honestly, most of the ideas seem a bit complex for this. Maybe go into your test world and use creative mode to build, test each idea, then pick your favorite. Worst case, you trap the wisps in a room underground with a hopper hawk uh, and a single open opening block with slabs so they cannot escape. And you can shoot and you can shoot in spark, sparkly, shiny, glowy fish in a barrel. If you need to automate it, you have nearly infinite iron and pumpkins find out how many wisps it takes to kill an iron golem maybe that's reverse maybe it's how many iron golems it takes to kill a wisp I don't know uh, also you while hovering over those things uh, you may made to see if they have other uses they likely do also you while hovering over those things you made to see 
if they have other uses, they likely do. I'm not 100% sure what that one means. Um, I'll have to look into that. And then Infitomes actually commented underneath Sky Silver Wings saying, the problem with vanilla iron golems is they can't fly. Wisps will fly up when, when uh, aggro on mobs. Uh, so you have to make the spawn room three high, which could kill the spawn uh, spawn rates to almost nothing, because of how vanilla spawners work. Uh, we're actually going to go over that too, because a lot of people, to be honest, just for ease of use and convenience, a lot of people actually make their spawner rooms incorrect. Uh, to you know, well, it's not necessarily incorrect, but they they make them larger than they actually need to and stuff uh let's see da, 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 da. Uh, a group a small group of thomcraft iron golems with dart upgrades would probably be fine since they attack at range but the mana pulse system is a basically idiot proof just four pulse spreaders with now i i played with this and i can't get four pulse spreaders unless there's something that makes the damaging lens spread even more uh, but that's okay cuz we're gonna look at that also just four pull spreaders with uh, the lenses I mentioned in the corners of spawn uh, oops I didn't click the read more and a mana pool in the center of the room on the floor to get it to arc and kill wisps instantly fast oh insanely fast sorry no HP to worry about, no fitty programming, just magic laser beams, which sounds awesome. Uh, also, the dinging is the primal charm. It makes noise, it makes noises, and had flavor text if you hover on it, but it also drops viz orbs occasionally to charge the wand. So that's um, what it is, I guess. It's this guy. Actually, I might not have it in my inventory right now, which is why we're not hearing the dinging. Um, I think we put it in a chest back there. We put all those little primal things that we created, but that's what they are doing, apparently. Uh, we can verify that. Let's hit F5 again. Do, 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 do. I don't remember where I put them. Oh, actually, I put them right here. Right? No, I didn't put them right there. Dang it. I put them somewhere. Was it this one? I'm so good with my chest. Oh, actually, I don't think I made those before I had this world, so they're not here. They're in the other world. Uh, this is actually considerably old. This was when I was testing that stuff. So that, that makes sense. But anyway, yeah, I did have those things, and I put them in a chest, and that's why uh, we're hearing that dinging is because the primal charm is making those little viz orbs, not not XP orbs. Alright, so <laughs> we're, we're done with the first comment. Uh, the next one is by another game. Please, they're nice and short. It says, are you still getting my comments for the last two weeks? Uh, it seems you didn't have them. And I did answer saying yes. I The last comment I received was about two weeks ago. Uh, most of the comments after that were on Slasta videos. Uh, and it says, yeah, I'm trying to find them on my end. Uh, it was just a week when I talked about Arum Flower's uh, Arum Flower name and details. The Eucalyptus daisy is a Batania flower that uses Batania mana to produce Arum essence. Now we were looking into that. I think that was one of the potential things we we're going to look in into, but the Wisp thing seemed a lot quicker. Uh, we still can look into this. Because um, I'm interested in just at least what it is or um, how difficult it is. Uh, you, put it, you put it down in range of a mana pool and it produces lots of RM. It, it's an infusion, but it's a lot easier uh, than, than a wisp grinder. So that's that one. Uh, then next we have, you will need extra primal charms real soon. You can find the node list by hitting the letter, I think it's I. And I did change that. I is what I use for inventory um, in most of my games. So that 
becomes really no brainer for me to open an inventory. Um, so anyway, I did rebind it, as I said, to the apostrophe key, or the semicolon, not apostrophe. Uh, then the next one, we're almost finished, I promise, uh, says, so your intro is great, but I thought this for a long time, that regrowth world is actually hot and hot, not cold. When you say where we're bringing this cold, dead, desolate world back to life one block at a time, you don't have to change it, but I wondered if you knew the wasteland biome is hot. I did know that, and I did reply saying that when I'm saying cold, dead, desolate, what I mean by cold is it's unforgiving. It is uh, heartless, you know. Uh, not necessarily the temperature. So uh, if it does bug you guys, let me know. I will try and change it, but we're like 251 episodes in. This is 252, um, and that's going to take a while to deprogram out of me. And then, let's see, two more. Uh, the next one says, All the ideas for killing wisps seem like overkill to me. When you can create a Euclidaisy flower, which uses Batania, Batania mana to create Aurum ethereal essence, then just use any gathering system you prefer as the flower drops the essence on the ground next to the flower. A enhanced, an enhanced inventory chest could be used to hold all the different types of of ethereal essence or you could melt it all down and have an alchemy golem sort it all if you automate it all uh, you need to get avoided warded jars to take care of all the excess arum you can break the flower when you have enough uh, to turn it off by giving it a redstone signal so that's uh, pretty cool too uh, and then finally the last comment oh wait Oh! Oh, we are still recording. Oh, for a second I looked over at my thing and it wasn't recording. I was going to say, oh, how long have we been? We've been doing 12 minutes. Oh, I'm so glad that it's still recording. The last comment is, the experience dinging is probably ghost experience. I've noticed playing this pack that experience drops from all around and don't despawn as you spend time AFK. Sometimes you see... Uh, them other times you don't all right so those are all our comments um i did comment on that last one that uh infitomes uh did say that that is because of the primal charm we're holding in our other one and that uh it just kind of randomly generates that all right so oh thank goodness it's still recording i was gonna cry seriously bad um so Let's go check out our stuff over here. So if we come over here, here is my testing area. So as you can see, at first I was trying to just kind of get an idea of how these things even worked. Um, so what you do is you have the regular mana spreader. You put a lens just by right clicking, which is pretty easy to put it on there. I did find that one mana pool can actually power up to five of these. I guess you couldn't have a sixth because that would block the back. And you do have to feed this mana pool in some way or another. Uh, let's go ahead and do this real quick. So, um, I also learned some other cool things. By the way, the reason we are seeing the outline of this, this is the influence of these flowers. So this is how far they can pick up... Uh, they can point to the items, I guess, and they can pick up uh, they can uh, pick up like coal that we throw and stuff. And this is actually due because I put I took off my flugel tiara and I put on how do we get to the bobbles one? Isn't it B? I put on this mana seer monocle, which uh, will allow you to see this stuff. So I can actually see the influence or the range, I guess, of these flowers and some various other things. Also, I'm not sure if it was the manacle that did this or not, but no, it's not because if I, I have to hit B again so I get my other inventory back. If I mouse over the flower, it's showing you what it points to. So we can see here that this flower points to our mana spreader. 
Uh, and then our mana spreader, we can see, actually points to uh, that very uh, mana pool. So this is, uh, this is pretty cool. Um, doing my testing, putting creepers up here, it takes about two of these blasts. Now let's go ahead and turn it on. It takes about two of these blasts to actually kill a creeper. Now one benefit of this... Uh, is that if I'm standing right here and I come out of uh, creative, whoops, I have to do this, slash game mode one, oh, I forget, it's always going to tell me I can't do that because cheats are disabled. All right, so now if I do that, now I, uh, not one, you guys probably knew that. So now I'm in non-creative mode, and you'll see these blasts actually do not hurt me, which is, kind of nice um, but as you can see they are fairly slow and it takes two of them to kill a creeper so if we put a, a little creeper down here uh, I don't think I have the ache right now I don't well it doesn't take that long let's let's grab uh, just whatever we see first uh, we need miscellaneous Let's do a zombie, for example. I think they might have a little more health. So if we put a zombie here, you'll see that that took him down to two hearts left. He's going to burn, of course, to the sunlight. That was a, probably a bad example. But as you can see, it does take about two. Now, it also takes about two for it to totally kill a wisp sometimes. Uh, the cool thing is, though, if I have multiple... I'm going to have to do creepers because they're resistant oh, actually it was right next to it that's not a big deal so a nice thing about it though is that we're gonna have to break this 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 so they don't try and run away uh, if we put three creepers it actually goes through them which is kinda cool it actually penetrates now it does less damage the further back it gets so after these first two get down to two hearts this guy wasn't quite there so this is pretty cool however with this very setup right here we have this hole in the middle, which means there is a chance that uh, wisps could be floating right here and not getting hit, or right here. So I did come up with another idea to make it so we could cover at least six. Uh, and now we get a nice flat, uh, full thing here. Now this is where it came very important to know about how we can point these guys. So you can see this one and this one are pointed to that spreader, this one and this one to that spreader, this one, this one to that spreader. And then if I click on the spreaders or mouse over the spreaders, you can see that they're pointing to individual uh, mana pools. So doing this way, we're able to do this. Now if we stagger these back, you know, and I'm pretty sure the one thing I was thinking that I, I didn't know for sure is can these shoot through glass and still do damage? So where's where's regular glass? Isn't it? It's right there. So if I put, say, which one of these is the one I was using? This one. If I put glass in front of this. Oh, I didn't know I could take that off. All right, well, let's put glass in front. Oh, sorry, wrong thing. All right, so actually it cannot, it doesn't look like. Yeah, so as soon as it hits a block, transparent or not, it actually will fell. So this introduces a new problem. Um, well, it's not too big of a problem. We're, we're going to go over this in a minute. So anyway, so this is kind of what I've discovered is one, if we're going to have a setup like this, well, if we're going to cover an entire uh, spawner, then this means we actually have to have a boatload of these things. Not only do we have to have a boatload, they have to go up to four high, which means we either have to stagger them back further, which can also be beneficial because that means then this one can go there and actually be powered by that pool. Uh, but then the next one up would have to even go back further and would have to have its own pool. And then the one behind that would even be further. Or we could have one wall 
be the first two layers and another wall be the next two layers. However, we're going to have a spawner uh, that will be sitting about right there-ish. And you'll notice that that stops this one, which means sprites, uh, not sprites, uh, wisps will be able to hide behind this and not get hit. So it's not being efficient in that sense. So I needed to come up with some kind of solution that would uh, fix this issue. Uh, so over here, we can see my solution. And this is fully working. This guy over here is simply to take care of the opposite side of that spawner. Uh, so if I go add coal here, and we go add coal here now you can see we have all these spreaders now this isn't very efficient because we only have four for each two so that definitely is not very efficient uh, and it will be able to run out however I don't think we're gonna be using this that much but if I come over here and just throw down these coal I know I'm wasting a ton of this because it's only taken a small chunk of it that's okay so now if we come over here, we can see, and I have to go put redstone by this clock. We can see that this ginormous room here is now able to kill all the wisps that spawn. And it's actually really pretty darn efficient. It, it does a great job. So as you can see, they spawn. There's three right there. And those ones hit it and they pretty much die right that one got a little ticked off but for the most part it works great now the one thing about this is I get the feeling even with without my wand these pink ones and the red ones are still shooting out their mana bursts and this uh, seems like it could potentially generate a great amount of lag over time it looks cool as heck though you gotta admit it looks awesome <laughs> so now you'll notice also that this room those that have a really good eye will notice that on this side of the spawner there is basically three and on this side of the spawner there is four and that's because the way spawners work is if this is the spawner it's actually this corner that you're basing uh, your because it's technically not a center uh, basically it spawns uh, in a room of it, it does eight right so basically what we're looking at from this corner right here which is the um, where does it show my directions up there do, do, actually I guess it's in that map up there so basically is it this way I think it's this way <laughs> I might have to go double check on the wiki, but uh, basically it's from, I think it's this corner right here. <coughs> Actually, no, I think it's the um, northwest corner, right? Is that the direction we're facing here? Yes, northwest. So from the northwest corner, this goes out to there, and then this side goes out another three. So basically, this is how big your spawn room. Now, for water and everything else, a lot of people just do a nine. Right? But technically, this is non-spawnable space. This, the, the spawner can't actually reach here. And then doing the same thing, that means this is one, two, three in this direction. And we've got one, two, three, four in this direction. So this being the spawner, do I have a different block to be the spawner? Let's have a piece of coal. So this is the spawner. This is actually the range in which it can spawn things. So when we have a 9x9 nine nine room, we actually have a whole side that is invalid spawn space and another side over here that's invalid spawn space. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so anyway, you can see uh, this has this has been running for a while in in my other world. But I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of all this stuff, so we can see it what actually creates. So down here we have a hopper hawk, which is able to grab everything that falls on the floor in there, and everything's good. Uh, but 
I mean, if you come down into your base, throw coal, one, you know, however much coal, one stack of coal, and then pick it up and throw it there, the same thing. I'm sure you could actually use one stack of coal and power this whole thing, uh, and it'll last for about five or seven minutes, I believe. But as you can see, it will be able to get us um, a decent amount of these things. So this is kind of a pain in the tushy to actually create, <laughs> to make. But here you can actually see what I'm talking about. So that's the actual spawner. We have four in this direction because this is the wall. As you see, this is the wall right there. Uh, and then we have three in this direction. Then we have three, actually I did it backwards down there. Uh, and then in this direction we have, no, this is three. This one actually goes to four because this, well, you can't see it, is not the wall. So there you go. That is actually how spawners work. Uh, they, they do it just like that. So anyway, this is, this is fairly efficient. Uh, it's kind of a pain. But I was doing some more research and I found something even a little better uh, that won't be nearly as complex, shouldn't generate nearly as much lag. Um, and this is using what's called the uh, Bellthorn flower. Now the Bellthorn flower actually uh, damages things within its range. Now in the wiki, I like how every now and then they shoot off like that. In the wiki, it actually says that uh, it does like a range of 9 by 9. Was it 9 by 9? 8 by 8 by like 6 or something like that. However, my uh, testing has shown that it does not. It does the same plane that it's on. So that means anything up here would be safe, which means I need to have another bell, th bell thorn on this level, this level, and this level. Now, one other thing about spawners is they technically only spawn. If we watch in here for a minute, we'll see they never, they spawn right there, one below, but they never spawn two below the spawner, and they spawn two up to two above. So if we look right here, we might see one spawn on the level of the spawner, one up there, and one up there. However, below the spawner, they don't, they only go one below. So when you're creating a room that doesn't need to have a big drop in it, if this is our spawner right here, that area right there needs to be spawnable, that area, and that area. Now if you're doing mobs that are too high, then it's a good idea also to have that so that they have too high. But technically, the, the thing says that it's one below and two above the spawner. And then, of course, the three in one direction. Did I do that right? This is, this is the four. This is the four. And this is the three. And then, of course, uh, the four in that one. Oops. And three in that one. Wait, that's wrong. Well, technically it's not. This actually needs to come off here. Yeah. That looks really weird. But anyway, so that is the actual spawnable space, which is pretty small. Now I'm beyond 16 blocks, so this isn't doing it anymore. But if we come under here, you'll see in this short time we've been here, we've already got 22 of that one, 9 of that one, a decent amount. So now let's go look at my, what I consider a more elegant solution. So this one simply needs to have, and this is even probably overkill, uh, because as you can see from our little uh, guy right here, it's half full. So this is actually filling that mana pool way faster. Now one really cool thing about the bell thorn flowers is that they only use the mana to do the kill. So if there's nothing in there right now, they're not expending mana where no matter whether these guys down here have something to kill or not, that burst right there is using a chunk of mana where these guys simply are 
not doing anything until they start killing. Then they use that. So all we have to do is throw a small chunk down here. And oh, I probably, I keep forgetting. I need to move it actually back a little further because it's in the range of the, it's in the range of the uh, Hopper Hawk. Uh, but anyway, so in this case, and I was trying some testing about turning off the spawner. It did not work. Um, it slowed it down by turning this on, and I even added lights to the bottom, but it didn't actually stop the spawner. So they have a different lighting requirement. But as you can see here, we have two on this side, on the uh, second level and the third level. And then on this side, we actually have one in front of the mana pool, which I could easily probably move this mana pool back one and then move that flower there. And we have three on this side. Now, the reason we have them actually on both sides, if we look at this, um, I'm going to have to have a block to stand on real quick. If we, I think this will work anyway. Because I have this monocle, as you can see, we can see the, area that it's influencing right this area if I I think it's shift click on it like that now nope that didn't work is it with this no it wouldn't be with this something's supposed to make it so that stays and I can't I thought it was shift click but if I do that and I come over here I would see that two rows over on this side are not getting covered by the bell thorn. So um, I wish I could remember the key because maybe you can see it right here. Uh, you might be able to kind of see it. See how the corner over there, if you look right over there, you can see that it is not being covered. So we have the second bell thorn over there, which is increasing the kill speed um, but it also helps cover the rest of this area now this direction as you can see if we click on if we mouse over this you can actually see it goes well over on the side uh, how far it goes that makes sense. now one thing when I made this room with the spawner in it it is the typical 9x9, nine nine. so I could probably even do bell thorns just on one side uh, if I were to make the spawn room more like that, where it's one block shorter all the way around. But this is not too hard to make. Uh, the bell thorn, not too hard to make. Uh, we've already got a bunch of spreaders, we got a bunch of these. So basically, all we'd have to do is go and create this. Now, one thing I did do in this one is I do have a pillar in the center. This will help it so wisp drops cannot, wisp sprites, wisps, uh, don't actually land on the spawner because the hopper hawk won't get it up there. But if you look here, this one I've been AFKing for a little while. <laughs> and there's lots of other junk in here. I need to back up just a little so the stuff can go to the ground. So if we just stand here just a little while while we talk, this seems to be like a, a pretty darn uh, efficient um, setup. Just because we don't have to have all those mana shooters as cool as they are. I mean, that you got to admit, that is really cool looking. But all we'd have to do is come here and basically somewhere around here, just stand within 16 blocks of this and it's going. That's it. Uh, there's there's nothing else we have to worry about uh, if if we want more you know we can just add another nine blocks of coal here and we get another like seven or so minutes of them spawning and dying so this definitely seems like the better way I mean they die pretty darn quick it's not instant but uh, yeah, it's pretty quick. So I think this might be more along the ways to go. I still do, like I said, I still do want to look at the other method uh, of doing the RM flowers because I, I like to learn everything I can. Uh, and we can actually see how quick it is. But as you can see, 
just standing here, if we just come here, throw, you know, that in there, it's actually going to be able to kill for a good long time because that pool doesn't drain very fast. But, like I said, <laughs> if you're going to AFK here, you might want to turn down your sound because that noise gets irritating where they're like... <laughs> But right now, let's see, we've probably been AFKing here now for maybe a minute or two. And you can see we've already got 14 and 3. So definitely, and it only seems to give us those two colors. I don't know if that matters for anything. But uh, this definitely seems like a good setup to me. And it seems pretty lag friendly. So um, I think we're going to end it here. That was a 35-minute video. I knew it was going to go long just by the sheer quantity of, of comments that I got. And then also um, uh, the, all the stuff we needed to go over. See, I mean, look at that. It's beautiful. It works great. One thing I did want to point out, and I bet you guys know this, but if when I'm placing these items that I have here actually I could just delete this delete that, oh yeah I pick up a lot of that junk so one thing I wanted to point out that I did not know maybe you guys knew this but I did not if I have to place say a mana pool and I'm doing one of these setups um, something like this and this let's go grab these if I come down here it, I don't have a dirt. A dirt, dirt. Alright, so if we say we're setting up one of these things, let's just come way over here where we're nice and far away from everything. If I set up, say, the flower first, and then I set up a. Uh, I think I do it this way, right? This, and then the mana pool. If I go look at the flower with the thing you'll notice it's not linked to anything this guy actually linked to the mana pool but this guy did not link to that guy now if we do this the other way well I guess I don't want to do that but if we do this say another way where maybe we I'm actually surprised that the mana spreader did find the right thing first Actually, you know what? Let's do this. Um, let's not line it straight in front. Because if it's in front, that's when it actually will link. So if I do that and that, you'll see that it's not pointing at it. We actually have to do this shift thing and then shift on that. And now it's pointing at it. Now, that makes sense to me. However, what uh, I didn't know is that if I place say my flower first and then the mana spreader and it can be directly in front of it, could it be right next to it like that if I look at this flower it does not know about that mana spreader however if I place the mana spreader first and then I place the flower oh that's not my flower you'll actually see it it does point to the mana spreader so when you place it it will try and connect to the mana spreader that's nearest to it now another thing is if I have two mana spreaders and I think it searches first in front of it because if I place a flower here and a flower here even two of them we'll see so if we go like this and click on this You'll see, yep, that's pointing to the one we expect it to. Let's go and plant this one. That is pointing to the one we expect it to. Um, this one and this one. You'll see they're actually pointing to the ones nearest in a direct direction. I guess in the nearest direct direction, if that makes sense. Now, I guess this is actually kind of testing because I just barely thought of this. Uh, but if we have two there and we say put a flower here I'm curious because they're identically 
basically, I, well, actually, I guess we need to put it here and see which one it's going to connect to. So it chose the one that is facing the, I can barely see, I need to hit F3 so I can see it north. Now, I don't know if that's always. And let's try this. If we do this, is it going to connect to that one? So it must like, maybe it starts at north, then goes south, east, and west when it's scanning uh, to see if there's a thing. But anyway, uh, when I was doing that over there, it would have been a nightmare where I ha ha <coughs> had four going straight back. Um, and then having to link them all up, which I actually did over there. So, little tip would be place your mana spreader first, then your flowers, and they actually will link up a lot better. And uh, that's it. Um, I probably will not be making this monocle in our other one because I do like my flying. In creative mode, I don't have to worry about that. Um, although it still drains it. <laughs> So there we go, 27.3. Not too shabby. And as you can see, that stopped, but this pool only went up. So, I mean, you don't even need to fire that thing up every time you come here. You just come here and AFK for a bit. All right, so uh, that went a lot longer. What did I hit to get that academy thing? I don't know. C? Alt? No. I don't know. Uh, but anyway... Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you learned some new stuff. I know I definitely did doing all this experimentation. This definitely seems like one that I want to uh, pursue. Um, maybe make it smaller. I don't know. Um, yeah, anyway, this, is, this seems like the one I want to look at. But I do still want to look at uh, another Game Pleases idea with the other flower. The... I can't remember what it was called. Um, Eucal Eucala Daisy. Uh, but anyway, like I said, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a thumbs up down below. Aside from that, click that like and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter. Check out my Discord and my other channels. And don't forget to tell other people you know about my channel. Come check it out. If they like what they see, they can sub and we can just grow the channel. That is it, my friends. Until next time, I'll be seeing you later. Bye.